Hello, hello, what's up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I almost didn't do this. But because I am celebrating 80 years since Superman was first introduced, first created, I decided, well, I watched and reviewed the second Superman movie. So why not do the Richard Donner cut? Yes, this is Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut, because I'm sure most of you know by now, Richard Donner, the director of the original movie, was supposed to do the second one, and he shot most of the second movie before getting fired by Warner Brothers. So, so many years later, because fans asked for it, because fans uh, petitioned and just begged, they finally got a cut that Richard Donner originally intended what he originally wanted the second movie to be. So even though I reviewed the second movie, that video is out there, the theatrical one, I want to just talk about the scenes that are in this Donner cut, the differences and if it's better or what exactly was changed. First, let's talk about the fact that Marlon Brando's scenes are back. The theatrical cut, it was almost like Jor-El didn't exist. Even when they re-show the scene of Zod and, and them being punished and put into the Phantom Zone, you don't see Jor-El anywhere. This time, though, you do see him. And then throughout the movie, you see him even through the fortress. I like the idea, though, that the theatrical had uh, Superman's mother also a part of that program and that he also got to talk to her as well. But continuity-wise, consistency-wise, it makes sense to have Jor-El be there and and the first movie's ending with him spinning around the world and that being the reason why the phantom zone breaks open i think that was the original intent uh but because of what they had to use with existing footage and how they did the ending of this second movie instead they had the moment when superman takes the missile from the first movie and when he brings it up into space that missile's explosion is what causes the ripple effect which still now confuses me on well so then what was the big punishment that superman was supposed to have when he spun the world around i it's almost like this sequel pretends like he never spun the world around in the first movie which makes me wonder how did he save lois from dying did all of that just happen in a different way or maybe they just had to re-edit it that way to fit and use whatever footage that they could. Either way, though, I still like the idea of him spinning the world around. That being the reason why Zod and company broke out of the Phantom Zone. I really like the change of Lois, the way how she realizes that Clark is Superman when she looks at the newspaper, his picture, and then she looks at Clark from across the office and she starts to draw the glasses and the hat and the suit and she's convinced. She's like, yeah, these are the same guys. And she's talking to him and he's trying to backpedal. And then she just jumps out the window of the Daily Planet, uh, maybe a lot crazier than her jumping into the river in Niagara Falls, but at the same time, I like that Clark uh, seemed more willing to use his powers to save her when she jumps out of the window this time around. And I could buy her feeling sillier when Superman doesn't show up to save her in this instant. So I do like that. And uh, you see Lex when Tess Mocker breaks him out of prison. You get an extended scene of the two of them in the air balloon talking about their plan, what they're going to do. You get even more stuff of them going to the Fortress of Solitude. Not how he knows where it is, but still more of them finding their way in, talking to each other, going back and forth. When he goes through the crystals, each and every crystal, it's all Jor-El, it's all Marlon Brando. It's not other members of Kryptonians or the council, like in the theatrical cut. And the scene between Lois and Clark where he finally does reveal that he is Superman because, well, she tricks him into doing it. This scene is very much different. They're using, I think, rehearsal shot footage of the two of them because there's even shots of like Clark 
with his hair looking one way and then when it's a close-up of him his hair is different so i think it was just them rehearsing and somehow they got that on footage and they cut it together which is fine i still think the way it plays out in in this cut is better than how him tripping and falling into fire which seems out of character for superman to do by accident I don't really know how much mistakes Superman like that, clumsy mistakes he would make. So this makes sense. Her tricking him with the with the blanks and the bullet, that was great. And the scene where Superman talks to Jor-El and explains to him his love for Lois. And jor saying, well, this is big and these are the consequences. You're going to lose your powers forever, which I guess technically isn't forever but at least this version makes it seem like it is a bigger deal of what he's doing uh even the way how he gets his powers taken when the crystals start to explode as he's in the chamber like that looks better than how it did in the theatrical cut and when he decides to get his powers back when he shows back up to the fortress and he talks to jor -El, and jor -El says look I was serious about this and how much of a big deal it was, how much a mistake it was. So this time, once again, Clark feels like he's feeling the 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 gravity of what he did. And jor says, all right, fine. If I'm going to give you these powers, then that means you're going to lose communication with me. That means I have to use my last energy to give you. So again, it's sacrifice. It's sacrificing one thing for another. Superman is realizing what a mistake that was because he's going to have to lose communication with Krypton and his father. It, it, it just, it all means more this time around. You get some of the similar scenes of Zod causing the chaos and Planet Houston and or go to the White House, but it's all played much more serious, and I like that. They cut out all of the little goofy moments. Some of them, some of the silly moments, uh, I did kind of like, but what was cut seems necessary, at least in those instances. It does make Zod look more threatening and look more serious and like he means business. And when Superman shows up to face him, though, I do think that them cutting out the line of him saying, General, would you like to take this outside? They cut that out. And I don't understand why. I, I guess Richard Donner didn't like that scene. Or maybe he just wanted to cut as much of Richard Lester's shot footage as much as possible. But that was one line I definitely would have taken. Again, sillier moments cut out of the citizens in the town on the street reacting and making goofy stuff. Like, that's cut out, and that was good. I didn't talk about this in the theatrical cut. It is there as well, but just the moment of when Superman is fighting Zod, Nam, and Ursa, and he takes a step back and looks around and sees all of the people who are just, they're running for their lives, or they're scared, or stuff is falling onto them or nearly falling onto them and he realizes this is dangerous i can't let this fight continue in the city so he flies away and people are like what's he doing he's leaving us he's a coward even zaz says he is a coward and he'll rather look like a coward just to draw zod away from the city now zod should have just followed him and it would have made more sense for what superman was doing as opposed to lex being the one to say, I know where he is, and I guess it just to give Lex purpose and reason to be in the film. So you still have the moment with them at the the fortress and the last confrontation between Superman and Zod, although they take away the goofy teleporting stuff and the plastic S thing, like that's gone, like it should be. The telekinesis that Zod had earlier, that's gone. Again, makes sense. And and the very end of the movie where superman destroys the fortress he uses his heat vision and destroys it it's sad i'm like no i know uh jor said that we're gonna lose communication so there probably isn't a whole lot of a reason for him to still have the fortress at least kryptonian wise technology wise but still that's an awesome place that Superman could still have to go to whenever he wants to be alone or to think or to do anything. To destroy it, I think is a mistake, but I guess that's what Donner wanted to do. And in the theatrical cut, there is just a very quick scene of Superman bringing Lois back to her apartment. She's crying and then he just takes off. And it's like, wow, that was kind of a dick move, Superman. 
even though I know they can't be together, but it's just he just quickly leaves. This version, though, is extended, and they actually have a conversation at her apartment, and she's crying, and she's saying, we can't be together, fine, but don't worry, I will keep your secret, and he says, I know, like, he trusts her, and I love that. I, I just, I love that quick, short moment, but it's still an important moment between the two, and there's no amnesia kiss, thank God, but what they do is almost as equally baffling just because look if you say that he doesn't spin around the world at the end of the first movie then i guess this ending is fine but this ending i it's not like they showed a different version of how the first movie ends when they recap the beginning so it seems like he just spins around the world again <laughs> And just undoes everything and puts Zod and everyone back into the Phantom Zone, which makes sense. And But undoes the destruction in the city, which I guess also makes sense. But in thus sacrificing uh, his relationship with Lois, her ever finding out anything. I guess technically the fortress is rebuilt because he just reversed everything. But then you have the diner scene, which is still there, of him getting beat up by the guy after he lost his powers. The end of this movie shows him going back to the diner to get back at this trucker guy and beat him up, which was always something I liked in the first movie, that he did that and the guy got his. But with this ending, the trucker, that never happened. We reversed time. All of these events have, have, have been undone. So really, this version, Clark is just, he's so in wanting to get revenge mode that he's attacking a guy that essentially now hasn't done anything to him. Sure, maybe he still deserves it, maybe he's still a dick, but it, it just is, it's not, it doesn't make as much sense. Uh, the scene where he goes back to the planet and Lois, uh, she obviously doesn't, there's nothing there and they're just back to the way that they were. Again, I get the idea, it's better done than the theatrical of the amnesia kiss. I just never was a fan of the amnesia kiss, but I still have my issues of them undoing their growth them on doing the relationship and her finding out and just switching back it's done better here but i still don't like the choice in general for doing that so overall i might still have a couple of issues with this movie just in the nature of what it does and what it is but still it's it is better it's better than the regular superman 2 the theatrical cut it is better maybe if i could take if i could create my own cut the uh, the mike brown cut of Superman 2, I would take some stuff from the second movie, take a lot of stuff from this movie, and somehow configure the ending to where Lois doesn't forget everything. It, it, I think there is a great Superman 2 between the two versions of the movie. So guys, let me know in the comments below if you have seen the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2. Do you like it more than the theatrical? Do you like the theatrical better? Uh, is there changes that you wouldn't have made or like as well? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!